Oh God. First things first, I want to start off by saying this video already feels weird because this is the first time I filmed in my house in months and I just feel very awkward right now. And also I had a lot of coffee by accident and it's coursing through my veins right now. So I just wanted to say quick, hello. We just finished filming that whole Egypt series, which took a lot of time and I wasn't able to film anything else uh, for a few months. I think the last time I filmed at home was like November or December. So it's been a very long time. I've missed it, but at the same time, this feels weird because like I'm just by myself with the camera. It feels like I'm doing a therapy session. The camera is the therapist, except it has no degree. But anyway, as you seen from the, as you uh, okay, we just think. As you've seen from the title of this video, I'm assuming you can read. If you can't read, then the title of this video says, Are the new GCSE maths papers actually more difficult than the old ones? The last time I did a GCSE maths paper, it was in this video here. I like this, this video here. Lesson one, don't get sent. And in that video, I did the same GCSE maths paper that I did when I was doing my GCSE, which was in like 2015. And I just wanted to see if I would do better or worse than I did when I was 15 or 14. How old was I? 14 or 15? How, how old are you when you do GCSE? Not old enough for a Red Bull. Yeah, when I posted that video, I noticed there were so many people complaining saying that the old GCSE maths papers were so much easier than the new ones. Like back in my day, I felt old saying that I'm not that old. I'm only 32. Just GCSE exams in general have gotten so much more difficult. So today I'm going to try and put that to the test. I'm going to try and do one of the new GCSE maths papers instead and see if I can gaslight the whole GCSE population. I'm gonna do this in proper exam conditions. I wanna feel like I'm actually in an examination hall. Okay, so I found a 2023 Edexcel GCSE maths non-calculator. I don't wanna do the calculator one because I don't have a calculator. Also, I had a lot of coffee and I feel very jittery right now. It's not good. I can... You already said that. You already said that, mate. Stop repeating yourself. Like it's making me feel anxious. I feel like I'm actually sitting in an exam paper. If like you're revising and you're doing your GCSEs, you can use this as revision, but not as a student. You can do it as a teacher. So yeah, this paper was literally last year. So this is gonna be the most accurate representation of the new GCSE maths papers. Let me get this printed out and then we're gonna get started. I can already feel my nerves kicking in. I'm seeing graphs. I don't like graphs. What's this one? A cube has shush. Okay guys, so this is all printed out. I'm gonna make ways to the nearest exam hall in three, one. Okay, so we're here now. Guys, just make sure to keep it down a little bit. We're in an exam hall. Can't really speak too loudly, but apparently all we need for this test paper, the test paper, a pen and a bottle of water. You must now follow the regulations of the examination. Check your pockets now. Okay, cool. They've done all the examination announcements. I hired a couple invigilators. Forgot to take the label off my water bottle as well. Okay, now we're in serious exam conditions. We're not in space. We're not on the moon. I'm actually feeling nervous. I feel like this is an actual exam. Oh wait, I need to record this part as well. Miss, I have to use my phone. Let's get started. I need to stop talking. Okay, firstly, candidate surname. Should we do a surname? Subscribe with capital S because it's the surname. Question one. Okay, work out 8.46 divided by 0 0.15. Okay, question one, I'm already stuck. Because why is the first question, which is meant to be the easiest question, is telling me to divide decimals. Okay, so first, let's try and convert it to non decimals instead of 8.46 because that's confusing for my brain i'm gonna do 840 oh my god writing with a pen feels weird i haven't used the pen in ages 846 divided by 15 so that hasn't done me any favors because i'm still stuck how many times does 15 go into 84 why am i spending so much time on this question i've already wasted two minutes on the first question how do you do this <sighs> why am i sweating why am i sweating i think i did something wrong there wait what is 0 0.15 as a fraction 0 0.15 3 over 20 so if you're saying 8.46 divided by 3 over 20 that's the same as 8.4 6 times 20 over 3. So then we need to do 8.46 times 20 and then I need to do 169.2 divided by 3 which is I don't know because 56.4. Okay that's my final answer. Work out this minus that. Okay so 7 and 3 eighths minus 2 and a half. I'm assuming you need to convert these into what are they called? Just normal fractions. What's normal fraction called? Because this is called what? Improper? Staggered fractions? I don't know. I forgot what it's called. You need to convert this into improper fractions. So you go the denominator times the main number and then add that number. I think it's something like that. 56 plus 3 divided by 8 is, I don't know, and then minus 2 times 2 plus 1 is 5 over 2. Okay, so now we have 59 over 8 minus 5 over 2. And in order for us to take this number away from this number, the denominators need to be the same. So we need to multiply 5 over 2 by 4 over 4. Because 4 over 4 equals 1. And if you multiply any number by 1, it remains the same. So we need to get in different format, change the SD card. So then that goes to 59 over 8 minus 5 times 4 is 20. And then 2 times 4 is 8. So then that equals 39 over 8. 39 over 8. I'm moving on to the next question. The annoying thing is these are only going to get hard from now. I'm already struggling with these ones. Okay, next up. A cube has a total surface area of 150 centimeters cube. Work out the volume. Okay, what's the volume of a cube? Bruv, the only volume I've had to worry about the last few years is the volume of my TV. Okay, surface area. So it's a cube. Let me let me just visualize it. I think visualizing stuff helps. There's a cube. Okay, that's barely a cube. The total surface area is 150 centimeters cubed. So that means that when you add the area of every single surface, you get 150 centimeters cubed. How many sides does a cube have? Eight. Wait, is it eight? How many? Do I have a cube here? No, that 
that would be cheating. Okay, let me just draw out the cube again. So it's got one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, it's got six sides. Okay, so we need to find out the surface area of one side of it is going to be 150 divided by six is 25. So each side of the cube is 25 centimeters squared. We want to find out the volume. So then that means that we need to find out the length of each side of the cube, which is five centimeters. Volume of a cube is length times width times height. So it's five cubed, which equals 25 times five, which equals 125. Is that right? Why am I asking you? Invigilator. Now they're stomping over our graphs. Okay, I don't like this stuff. Okay, the table shows information about the daily rainfall in a town for 60 days. Draw a frequency polygon for this information. I don't know what a frequency polygon is. Is it bars or do you have like a line there? Okay, rainfall from zero to five, the frequency is eight. It's like somewhere there. I'm just gonna do it like this, like bars. And then from five to 10 is 24, 10 to 15 is 13, 15 to 20 is 11, 20 to 25 is four. Okay, I don't know if this is right or wrong, but it looks like I just built the pyramid. Okay, next question. E equals da 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 da. A equals odd numbers, B equals square numbers, complete the Venn diagram. Okay, this is doable. Odd numbers are A and then square numbers are numbers that are square. So one is an odd number, so you go there. Two is a square number, is it? I don't know if two is a square number or not. A square number is any number that you can square root. So two is not a square number, it's there. Okay, three is an odd number and it's not a square number. Wait, am I bugging? What's a square number? Four is a square number, because two squared is four. Oh, nine, you can square root nine. Okay, so nine is an odd number and you can square root it. So that's in the middle. Five is just an odd number. Three is odd, four is a square. Six is just an even number, so it's outside. Seven is a, uh, an odd number. Eight, is eight a square number as well? Square root of eight? No, 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 it's not. Next question. A number's chosen at random from the universal set E. I like how they did that E. Okay, I made it look like its parents are related. Find the probability that this number is in set B. A number is chosen randomly from here. I need to find the probability that it's going to be one of these numbers. There's 10 numbers in total and only two of them are in B. So it's 2 out of 10, which equals 1 over 5. So it's 0 0.2. The probability is 0 0.2. Oh, other graphs, man. This video is not me seeing if the new GCSE maths papers are more difficult. This is me going out of my way to collect a migraine and put it into my head. The scatter graph shows information about the ages and weights of some babies. Which baby is 12 kilos? That's a big baby. They did not have breast milk in the womb. They were having fried chicken breast. 10 kilo baby. Imagine picking up your newborn baby and it feels like you're doing a bicep curl. Okay, describe the relationship between the age and the weight of the babies. As you can see, the older the baby gets, the heavier they get. Age up equals weight up. Another baby has a weight of 5.8 kilos. Using a scatter graph, find an estimate for the age of this baby. So it's 5.8 kilos, which is around there. So this baby is around three months old. Big ass baby. Okay, next question. The price of a holiday increases by 20%. This 20% increase adds 240 pounds to the price of the holiday. Work out the price of the holiday before the increase. If it increased by 20% and that's £240 extra, how much is this holiday? Where are you going? So something times 1.2 equals... Wait, I think I overcomplicated this for no reason. Let me do this again. So something increased by 20%. There's a number. If you multiply it by 0 0.2, it will equal 240. So x times 0 0.2 equals 240. So then that means x over 5, because 0 0.2 is 1 over 5, equals 240. Which then means that x equals 240 times 5, which equals £1,200. That's an expensive holiday who's this okay why is this upside down the diagram shows a solid cylinder on a horizontal floor pressure equals force over area the cylinder has a volume of 1200 centimeters cubed height of 40 centimeters the cylinder exerts a force of 90 newtons on the this is way too much information for my brain right now let me just read what i'm supposed to do so now they want me to work out the pressure on the floor so pressure they've given me the, the formula pressure equals force over area so the force is 90 so the volume is 1200 the height is 40 we need to find out the area how do you find out the area of a cylinder what's what's the formula for area of a cylinder it's something to do a circle. Wait, so we have the cylinder there. We want to find out the surface area. A cylinder is kind of similar to a rectangle and two circles. If we rearrange this, this cylinder, it will be one circle up there, one circle up there. And instead of rolling that up and you take it out, it's going to be something like that. And we were told that this is 40 and that the volume is 1,200. What's the formula for volume of a cylinder? I think volume of a cylinder, you need to find out the area of the circle there and then multiply that by 40. So it goes pi r squared times 40 and that should give us 1,200. 1,200 divided by 40 is 30. Am I bugging? What am I doing wrong? Maybe I did the formula for volume of a cylinder wrong. Okay, I think I did that wrong then. I might have to skip this one. Use these graphs to solve the simultaneous equations. I don't really like using graphs. X equals minus 2y plus 2. 3x equals 2y plus 22. X is 6 and y is 2. Okay, so now we have another shape. Here's a pentagon and it's not the one in the United States. <laughs> Okay, the angle Aid equals four times angle of ABC. So this is the angle they're talking about. Work out the size of Aid. Okay, this one, that's an obtuse angle and that's a little angle, which is acute. Do you think they did it on purpose? I feel like they, they called it acute angle, but on purpose. Yeah, oh, it's so small and petite. It's a cute angle. And then obtuse one, they made it similar to obese. So, okay, this is a big angle. This is obtuse. Just say you're fatphobic. This is fatphobic angle. And then this is, oh my God, I can't reach the top shelf angle. Anyways, so this, the big thing, the big angle is four times bigger than that one. And in a pentagon, how many degrees are there in a pentagon? Try
triangle, we've got 180 degrees, square 360 degrees. If it goes up by 180 of every side that you have, this should be 540 degrees. So all of these angles need to add up to equal 540 degrees. So if we add 120 plus 135, 110, we get 385. So then we have to do 540 minus 385. So we have 155 degrees remaining. This angle is four times bigger than that one. So this angle plus that angle equals 155. And this angle is four times bigger than that angle. So something 4x plus x equals 155 because this is four times bigger than that one so then that means that 5x equals 155 so x is 31 degrees so then that means this angle here is 31 degrees but then this one is four times bigger so it's four times 31 124 degrees okay then okay so basically you get rid of the fraction oh i forgot how to do these when you square the whole thing in the brackets you square every single individual thing in it so it's six squared and then x to the power of five squared y to the power of three squared which equals i don't know if that's right or not and then for the denominator here three x squared y to the power of 7 times 4xy minus 3. With this, okay, 3 times 4 is 12, and then x squared times x is x cubed. That x is to the power of 1, and when you multiply them together, you add the powers together. So then we have 36x to the power of 10, y to the power of 6, divided by 12x cubed, y to the power of 4. Please be correct, bro. Okay, next question. E, what's going on here? Martha plays a game twice. Martha? I've never met a Martha in my life. I think the youngest living Martha right now is 85, and her granddad was a Victorian chimney sweeper. She plays a game twice. Find a probability that she will lose at least one game. So the options are lose, lose, win, lose, lose, win. With this one, the probability is 3 over 8 times 7 over 9. 5 over 8, 7 over 9. And then lose, win is 3 over 8 times 2 over 9. And then we add them all together. That's a high probability. Why is she playing this game? She's destined to lose. Is she gambling? Mar is Martha a serial gambler? Martha's a gambler. They're putting gamblers in GCSE maths papers now. Martha, if you're watching this, the probability that you lose at least one is 63 over 72. Stop gambling. Focus on your kids. Next question. Y is directly proportional to X. Work out the value of y when x equals 5. Eh? I don't know how to do this, bro. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Wait, no, actually, no. I don't have an idea. I thought I had a little kumbaya moment. No, it's not kumbaya. Eureka moment. And there's going to be a light there and a light there. But no, there was no light. It was all just dark. Bro, I don't know how to do this. How many questions are there? Bro, I still have bare questions. Wait, this is heavy. This is coming like one of the babies in question two. Okay, so I'm over halfway, but this is where the hard questions start. One sec. I need to go to the toilet, bro. Let's kind of go to the toilet quick. Anyways, let's continue. Okay, what do you want me to do? What's, the, what's perpendicular again? This is intersection. These are parallel. So perpendicular means they're like this. That doesn't mean anything to me. I know there's like a formula for it, but I can't remember what it was. I actually don't know what the formula is. I'm going to have to skip this, unfortunately. Here's a sphere. Okay, <laughs> I knew that. Now, instead of being outside, enjoying the sun, I'm sat indoors doing a flipping GCSE maths paper. It's actually so sunny. The skies are blue. Here's a sphere. Surface area of a sphere is that three eighths of the surface area of this sphere is 75 pi centimeters. What? So I need to find the diameter of the sphere, which is basically the radius times two. So what I need to do is find out the radius. And I can do that by saying four pi r squared equals the surface area of the sphere but they're saying that 3 8 of it is 75 pi so that means that i need to do this times 3 over 8 and then that should equal 75 you can get rid of this pi here and then we got 3 over 8 times 4 r squared equals 75 12 over 8 times r squared equals 75 if we bring this over there we got r squared equals 75 times 8 over 12 so then that means that the radius equals square root of 50 but we want to find the diameter and the diameter is 2 times the radius so then that's 2 times square root of 50. Hopefully that's correct. 17. Make x the subject of the formula y equals that. If we expand the brackets it goes 8x minus 28 divided by 5x plus 3 equals y and then if we take that over to that side we get y. Did I do something wrong? We want to separate the x because we want to make that the subject so then we go x 8 minus 5y and then 3y plus 28 equals x 8 minus 5y and then we just bring that over to there and then x is the subject. Okay 7 kilos of carrots and 5 kilos of tomatoes cost a total of 480p. Why can't you just say 4 pound 80? Why are you saying 480p? Because now it's making me think that it's like low pixel. Where are the 4k carrots? So I need to work out how much they cost. Once again, I think algebra is the way forward. 7 kilos of carrots times price of carrots. Let's call the price of carrots x. Plus 5 kilos of tomatoes. Let's call that y. Equals 480p. And then these lot, these lot. And then here is telling us that the ratio of the prices is 5 to 9. So then that means that, what does that mean? The ratio 5 to 9 is the same as saying 1 to 9 over 5. Because if we just divide each of these by five we get one and we get nine over five so then we get rid of the five there we get rid of the five there i checked the, the no look mathematics 16x equals 480 so i'll make a no look maths edit so then we have x equals 480 divided by 16 so then the price of one kilo of carrot is 30p price of one kilo of tomatoes is 54 next question we're almost at the end we have half an hour left all right cool the menu in a restaurant has starters main courses and dessert there are five stars 12 
I did I don't have 12 fingers 12 main courses and there are X desserts there are 420 different ways to choose one star when one main course and one dessert what okay so they're saying that there's 420 different combinations was this maths paper sponsored by Snoop Dogg can I don't know how to do this I'm just gonna say 15 man a B and D are points on a circle with a center O C D E is the tangent to the so oh, okay I got you know the migraine that I got before that one came from there this this new one is coming from here and is hitting this side of my head write down any circle theorems used I haven't used a circle theorem in the years a circle theorem is not what helps me pay the bills I can't go to NatWest and be like guys can you give me a mortgage and they're like nah 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 I haven't done enough circle theorems I'm gonna have to skip it that's four marks gone out of the drain okay Absidugov is a cuboid F is 6.8 fuck FC football club is 13.6 look at the side of the angle between football club and the plane ABCD the plane where's the plane FC is 13.6 where's football club oh there it is this is con this is bamboozling me right now so I need to find out the angle between this line here and the plane here what oh, I'm baffed now also guys do you want to see Kenzie she got a onesie Kenzie come here bro look at her she got a flipping onesie by the way she's not just wearing pajamas here she had an operation in it and they had to like cut up open her belly so she has to wear this to make sure that she doesn't lick that part during the operation they put on the bare drugs so when I went back to collect her Bro, she was so high. Kezi was on every drug ever, innit? <coughs> Kezi, do you want to try more drugs? <coughs> Work out the size of this angle. I can't do that, bro. And it's two marks. This can't be difficult if it's two marks. Is it something to do with hypotenuse, bro? <coughs> bro, there's an invigilator right there. <coughs> bro, this feels like bring your child to work day. But she actually sitting like one human. Bro, look at her legs. Look, look how she's sat. Kenzie, why are you man spreading? You're not even a man. Bro, I can't do that. I don't know the formula. Okay, write this fraction like this. I don't know how to do this. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I just did it on a separate piece of paper. This is the working out if you want to pause. Um, I was just not trying to talk, but I think that's my final answer. 27. Hey, 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 bro, what are you doing? Did you not hear the announcement at the start? It was like, don't eat your exam paper. I could have just used that as an excuse for my cat ate my homework. So why are you eating it? Flipping hell. You know, it's basically a tree. This comes from trees. You're not vegan. This this is the second last question. Find a set of possible values for x for which la la la. What, what am I supposed to do? Wait, that was the last question. Oh, that was the last question. Damn. Okay then, I'm done with this math paper. I could turn this off now. Oh my god, I haven't used my phone in an hour and a half. That was literally an hour and a half on the dot as well. So now I think I'm gonna change my role from student sitting in the maths exam to now being the examiner or the marker of the exam. All right, let's get the mark scheme. All right, I got my red pen here. You know what? Instead of going through all the answers, I'm just gonna mark it myself and then I'll show you the results at the end. Save you time. Save me time. Okay, I'm done marking this. Okay, so three, four, five. 13, 45, 36, 47. Nothing. I didn't answer. Didn't answer. 53. 56. Is this out of 100, bro? It's out of 80. 56 out of 80. Okay, now we need to see the grade boundaries just to see what grade I got. What? Why is it saying 203? What are you on about? Oh, that's for three papers. Oh, yeah, I forgot you lot have numbers now. So there's no ABC. There's 1, 2, 3. Okay, so let's just take the average. So to get a 9, you need to get 203. So let's do 203 divided by 3. That's 67. I didn't get 67. On average, to get a 7, you need to get 48. I got 56. I basically got a 7. I was two marks off at eight bro that sounds so weird why did it take off abc's man wait so that means i did better in this exam than the one i did when i was in gcse let me count this again and see if i counted correctly 55 56 yeah so anyone that's doing gcse's right now firstly good luck secondly don't stress too much what you get in gcse is not going to define what happens for the rest of your life when it comes to subjects like math the best way to revise for it is literally just by doing as many flipping questions as you can yeah just bang out past papers bro you're chilling don't stress thank you for watching as always take care see you later i'm going holiday now to the bahamas see you later